things I enjoy when I talk to grade 12 students is I ask them, how many of you want to be a Franciscan friar or a Franciscan sister? And, you know, most of them are just kind of looking at, at me like, 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 who is that? And, you know, of course, nobody puts up their hand. But I always tell them, you know, when I was in grade 12, I didn't expect to become a Franciscan friar. So who knows? Who knows what path of life that we will, will take or how God will guide us in our lives? You know, sometimes when we're choosing a career path, we don't exactly know what we want to do in life. Sometimes we just have to, like, just dive in, apply for a job, and just go for it. And maybe it'll lead to something that we really, really enjoy or that we, we cherish and we're very happy to do what we do in life. You know, other times you maybe hit a point in life where you, you almost, it's maybe like a midlife crisis, like, I, I need to try something different or, you know, I don't know if this is the right thing for me. But sometimes they, some people have no choice. You know, they, they have to provide for their family and so they have no choice but to do what they do. Now, really what we're to look at when a person is in that situation is to see that they are serving the common good. In other words, they aren't doing it for their own benefit, they're doing it for the benefit of their family. I recently talked to a high school student that said exactly that. His dad is actually a philosopher, but his dad couldn't get a job in philosophy, so he had to get another job to be able to support his family. But then other times, what we actually have to do is we have to incorporate our spirituality into our job. We have to see this as a gift from, from God, as a way to be God-like and to see the image of God in others. And so sometimes it's not so much a, you know, crisis of career, but maybe it's more of a crisis of our spirituality. In the first reading from the book of the prophet Amos, by no means did Amos think he was going to become a prophet. You know, he's a herdsman. It, it's a good job it provides for Amos, and he is content. But it's the voice of God that motivates Amos to be a prophet. You know, he, as he says to the priest that he's not gaining anything from this. This isn't a task he set out to do and planned when he was in high school. This was something that, that Amos, you know, was motivated by the voice of God. You know, the voice of God that was, that was, that was stirring within and then allowed him to speak. And really, Amos is challenging the, the wealthy people to be generous with the poor. And this is why the priest is kind of shooing him away is because he's more aligned with the king than he is with God. And therefore he doesn't want, he's more concerned about his day job than about what God may be inviting him to. But let us always be open to what God may be inviting us to because that could lead to something that's very, very satisfying and something that we can truly be thankful for. And really in that second reading, the letter to the Ephesians, it's really what we're encouraged to do is to be thankful for all the spiritual blessings that we receive. And, you know, if we're open to it, God is always willing to give us spiritual blessings. You know, and, and God will constantly give us spiritual blessings, but we can obviously stop the blessings or we can, we can be hardened towards the blessings that God wants to give us. In the gospel reading, you know, these disciples likely in grade 12 didn't think that they were going to be disciples of the Messiah. But really they are going to carry out the same tasks of Jesus. But really what this is to do is to, is to ingrain in them the teachings of Jesus and then give them the ability to put them into practice. So when Jesus is around, they've already had a few occasions where they've gone out on mission and they're able to teach what Jesus has taught them. So it's a part of them and they can more freely teach others about Jesus. And then they're going to carry out the same tasks of Jesus by casting out demons and healing other people. And they are to do their tasks without too many possessions or without too many things that can distract them. And sometimes that can be our challenge in life is that we distract ourselves with very meaningless things. And so let us always be, be willing and open to live a more simple life, but really for the benefit of others. Let us be open to serving the common good in whatever way that will make us say thank you. And as we gather around the table, Lord, once again, we are strengthened. We receive this great spiritual blessing 
so that we can be prophets of the good news of the person of Jesus Christ and we can also carry out the tasks that we need to for the common good of humanity. Thank you.